Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse, a.k.a. BGFH, and I am back for kind of an iOS 11 impressions video. Um, it's not going to be a full rundown of every little feature. Um, there's probably a gazillion videos of that already out on the internet. Um, so if you want more of like a full, like, oh, here's the exact demonstration of every little feature... Uh, there's been quite a few videos even in my own YouTube feed that have been showing up like that. This is more meant to be a little bit of a demonstration and some of my thoughts on iOS 11 because, you know, you may have noticed like the last few years I've done a couple of iOS videos, I think for like 7 and 8, um, and then I kind of backed off a little bit because there was stuff, but I didn't really think there was a whole lot noteworthy to demo. But one thing I just learned quite literally um, prior to starting this video is so far it's working. Check this out. Doc, mail, two unread emails. Safari, double tap to open. We apparently, so far, are getting direct voiceover audio through AirPlay again. Huzzah! That's going to make doing voiceover accessible games and apps much much easier again you will actually be able to hear it um because <clears throat> i had tried it I actually i did do ios 11 beta uh for the last few months actually on my ipad pro uh i kind of used that as my side device didn't want to put the beta on my phone because i just i use that everywhere um so i did do it on my ipad and i you know i did let apple and apple accessibility know that hey you know, this is a feature that was in iOS 9. It was beautiful, super helpful, and it wasn't in iOS 10. Please bring it back. It would help a lot. And I don't know. So far, it seems like they did. And I, I did disconnect and reconnect a few times just to make sure it wasn't some uh, weird fluke where it just so happened to work once. And so far, it's been good. So here's hoping that we will now have voiceover uh, support over AirPlay as we did before which will make, like I said, me doing videos for apps and games that use voiceover, make that a bit uh, easier for you guys to hear. So, iOS 11, um, the reason I really thought about, like, again, I, I thought iOS 11, I might not do a video on it, because it's like, there's some new stuff, but I'll kind of show you the major things as we go, you know, like, oh, I'll do a video, video for a specific app or game or feature, and do it that way but the more I've been using so iOS 11 so it's Saturday right now um the what is the date today the 20 whatever it, but it's it's basically iOS 11 came out this past Tuesday officially and I downloaded it right away and at first I thought, you know, this isn't so bad. You know, it, I, the beta was pretty pretty stable. I didn't have Screen a lot dimmed. of problem there. So I Sports figured folder. that, okay, well, maybe, you know, maybe we would be okay. And for the most part we are, but there's always the question, you know, even you see Apple Viz, you see just in general public on Twitter asking, should I upgrade to the new version of an operating system right when it comes out? And... I would overall say yes. Um, it's generally pretty good, but I've kind of come to pause a little bit on that the last couple of days because I've encountered a couple of issues that kind of are driving me nuts. Um, so, first off, iOS 11. Let's take a look at some of what's new. Uh, the notification PM. center. Status bar item. So if I go up to my Swipe down with three fingers to reveal. and I flick down to three fingers no older notifications. with voiceover, it kind of has this tiered notification system, like where you get your most recent notifications, but then sometimes if you get a whole bunch of them, there'll actually be some that are hidden, and then you can kind of flick and you can get additional notifications. I'm not sure that I like that a lot, but it is there. Um... And you can still, you know, use your rotor and you can still, like, you know, flick up and down to dismiss or things like that. For a while in the beta, that wasn't there, but thankfully that is back. Because for a while, the, that was one of the feedback I kept giving is uh, the new, new notification center baffles the hell out of me. Um, Linus what folder, is new, 15 which apps. I actually really kind of like, is... 3.34 p.m. Status bar item. 
Status Swipe bar, down with three fingers to reveal notification. Fingers. Airplane mode. Here Switch buttons off. New control Double tap to toggle center. setting. Um, no more are there different pages that you have to flick through. You know, like you had in iOS 10, you had one for your media. You had your main one with a few switches and controls and things. And then you had like your home, you know, like if you had any home devices that could be uh, controlled with your iOS device, you had that kind of a thing. Everything is now in one big old screen. It takes up the whole, um, the whole screen here. And I, I really kind of like it because everything is all in one place and you can add and customize it a little bit. So on the top here, you've got, oh, there's a weird quirk that I, I don't like that they did. So your top left quadrant, you've got four little items. Airplane mode, switch button, off. Airplane mode. Double tap to Wi-Fi, JSFI, switch, Bluetooth, switch Bluetooth button, on. Cellular data, switch cellular button, cellular data. <clears throat> so what I've learned is that if you truly want to turn Wi-Fi or Bluetooth off, you actually have to go into settings and then Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and actually turn it off. Apparently, and I don't know if they're going to change this in a point release, but apparently what happens is that you, when you turn Wi-Fi or Bluetooth off in Control Center, it disconnects that, so if, let's say Wi-Fi, it'll disconnect from whatever Wi-Fi network you're connected to, but it doesn't actually turn it completely off. So like, you know, a lot of people, especially when they're low on battery, they'll like, oh, okay, I'm going to turn, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, turn off some of this extra background crap, because that's what they want to do. Um... So just know that you're not actually fully turning it off, at least right now. You actually have to go to settings to do that. I don't know why they made that change. That seems kind of really dumb and confusing because I didn't even know until it was going through the Twitterverse the last couple days. In the upper right hand, you've got media controls. Media controls. So um, you got that right up there. You play, pause, next button, whatever. Lock rotation, switch button, off. Lock rotation, Double tap to toggle that's setting. familiar. Do not disturb. Switch button, off. Do not disturb. Double tap Actually, to toggle you know setting, I'm going to turn that on because I'm doing a video. So we turn that on. Below that, we have... Highlander. Use 3D Touch to show Highlander, more controls. that's my... I've had people ask in the comments, what does Highlander mean? Yeah, that's just my goofy name that I have for my computer. It was kind of a joke and it just kind of stuck. I was talking with a friend and, you know, this was like this beastly computer that I had built at the time and it was like... There can be only one. And so I was like, okay, Highlander. And I just, it, yeah, whatever. Uh, to the right-hand side, you've got um, this. I actually kind of like, you've got these big sliders here. Brightness, 32%. Adjustable. I can adjust my brightness. Swipe up or down with one and finger to, to right adjust the that. value. Volume, 100%. Adjustable. Volume is at 100%. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust <clears> the value. I'm cranking it up so you guys can hear voiceover hopefully well enough. Um, I actually kind of like those because there are times where, like, especially at night or something, you're in a dark room and holy Jesus, you know, Apple in there, Apple loves white. So, you know, you're looking at something and the screen just seems like super, super bright. I just like the big control. I mean, I know you had the brightness slider before, but I just kind of like the look of it. Now on the bottom here, you've actually got some stuff. This is where the customization comes in. So there's a bunch of little square icons here. Flashlight button. You get a flashlight. Use 3D touch to show more controls. Timer button. You get a timer. Calculator button. Okay. Camera button. Camera. Use accessibility shortcuts button. Now this Use is Use 3D cool. touch to show more controls. I can Actions do accessibility available. accessibility shortcut if I want to. This is I added just for the heck of it. Apple TV remote button. I can quickly jump to my Apple TV remote, which I may want to do. Magnifier button. Now this is great because I like the quick access. This is something you can add. So Apple's built-in magnifier slash CCTV kind of a thing. Um... I didn't really use it partly in iOS 10, partly because it was not full screen, you know, because you couldn't hide the controls, but partly because I didn't want my triple click home gesture. I wanted that exclusively to voiceover so I could just toggle that on and off at will. But now that I can add the magnifier to my control center, especially if I'm low vision, I know where it is on the screen now. So all I got to do is flick up from the bottom with voiceover off, tap that, and boom, I'm into magnifier. So it's almost as convenient as triple-click home. 
and I've played with the magnifier a little bit in iOS 11. I'm using my iPhone 7 Plus, and it actually does look a little better. So I think they've kind of improved it a little bit. Uh, you know, I still use over 40 plus all the time. I use Vision Assist from time to time. Um, but I would give, you know, I got to kind of give uh, the built-in magnifier a little bit better shot. Screen recording button. Use Here 3D Touch to show go. more controls. Actions Not available. Not going to demo it for this video, obviously, because I'm doing it this way. But natively in iOS 11, I never thought this would happen. You remember from my channel the old XREC days prior to iOS 7. XREC, XREC was this app where you, you downloaded it from the App Store when it was available for like 2.3 nanoseconds. And... You could do screen recording, but then Apple got wise to it and said, hey, we don't like that kind of technology here, and they took it down, so you had to have it on your device. So I used it for a good while when I first started covering iOS, and then iOS 7 came out and broke that app, and that's all she wrote. Thankfully, Reflector stepped in. Uh, kudos to the Squirrels guys in Reflector because their app has been very, very helpful for me and many others. Um, but now we can record directly and i will do some of those videos especially as i talk about another upcoming or not an upcoming but another feature of ios 11 is probably how we'll record some of those videos or at least try to and yes you can record voiceovers like i can talk over what i'm recording on screen so not just for me, but let's say if you are you know you got a, you are a magnifier a screen recording user or just a user and you want to show people, maybe you go to your parents' house or something, and they just don't get technology very well. And you got they keep, you know, like, oh, how do I do this again? How do I do that again? Okay, let me record a quick video, because it'll just show up in, when you record a video, it'll show up in their photo. All they got to do is open up their photos, and the video will be there. So you could record a tutorial for somebody, you know, of you doing the task. Let's say, you know, they're like, how do I make, how do I do this thing? Or how do I download an app from the app store? Okay. I, you know, then you start the recording, you go to the app store, you talk through it. Um, you know, you, you demonstrate, okay, I'm going to search for an app or I'm going to look for a game and then I'm going to hit the buy button or the download button. And then you see it's on the home screen, boom, done, stop recording. And then you've shown them. So if they ever need to look again, they don't have to ask you for the 30th time. <laughs> you can just say, hey, go look at your photos, man. It's there. So there's a lot of practical use for it, as I have been saying for years now. So huzzah, screen recording is there, and it works pretty well. Voice memos button. Voice Use 3D memos. touch to show more I controls. Actions this available. This option as well. Um, and I'll show you where you can do that. But uh, voice memos, that is something, especially for work, uh, I'm done with an appointment and I just, I don't have a whole lot of time, um, maybe sometimes to write a whole lot down. So I'll just do like a quick couple minute voice memo so I can know what I have to do for my report. And there we go. Maybe there'll be more stuff added over time. Linus folder. And 15 that's your apps. new control center. Double tap to Not open. Not too shabby, actually. I like it a lot. So if you want to know where to go um, to enable and Doc, disable some settings. stuff, so I'm going to go to Double settings to open. here. Settings. And so I'm just going to go down the main part Airplane here. mode, off. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, personal hotspot, notifications, control center. Do not, control center, so control button. center. Selected, settings, back button. Customize controls, button. There's uh, access within apps, on. Access Double within tap to apps, toggle setting. I can turn that on or off. So like I can actually say like when I'm in an app, don't allow control center access. Um, customize controls. But if I go button. into customize controls, selected control center back button. You have a list, and you just you can enable or so. If I touch the top one here in the list, flashlight, actions flashlight. available. So let's say I didn't want that, or if I did, include heading. So I have an include section. Flashlight, actions available. And the flashlight is in there. Reorder flashlight button. And Draggable. I can reorder. Double so tap just and like hold. Wait for controls uh, and other places like where you can reorganize your voiceover rotor, that kind of a thing. Uh, you can reorder how you want that stuff to be. And then there's also a section down below. More controls. Heading. More controls. These are things that I chose not to include for now. Insert alarm. Button. One of eight. Okay, so alarm. Alarm. Do not disturb while driving. Do not disturb while driving. That's a, actually an obnoxious feature. Guided access. I, I see where it's great, um, but you can do guided access. Low power mode. 
low power mode. Actually, I mean, hmm, maybe I might put that in at some point. Notes. Notes. Stopwatch. Text size. Wallet. Okay. Rows 4 to 17. So there's not, Wallet. A, there's not a whole lot in there that I didn't add. But if I wanted to, I could. Um, and I could take some of the other ones out. Like, I don't necessarily know that I need flashlight. But occasionally, you know, I, I have used it a couple of times where it's like, dang, it's dark in here. I just need a little turn my flash on. Um, so that's where you go to control some of that stuff. Um, let's go back. Alarm. Customize controls. Button. And let me go settings. into, Heading. while we're in settings, I want to show you another potential feature that I really want to like, but it just doesn't seem fully baked yet, and I've given them a lot of feedback during the beta. Let's go into accessibility. General. So button. let's go to general. Selected. Settings. Back and button. Let's go into home button. Button. Accessibility. Accessibility. Button. Selected. General. Back button. Now, you have your voiceover. Voiceover. On. Zoom. Off. Button. Zoom. I don't have that on right now. Magnifier. Off. Button. Magnifier. So again, there's a much quicker way to get that. I just added that to my control center, and boom, I can toggle that on and off at will. Display accommodations. Off. Button. Display accommodations. This is a new kind of a category under the visual area. And if I go in Selected. here. Selected. Accessibility. Back. Invert colors. Off. Button. So invert colors is off. But we, here's where I want to go because. Selected. Display accommodations. There's Back a button. new feature that is potentially really useful, especially since Apple, even with OLED screen uh, iPhone 10 coming out, they don't seem to want to put a dark mode in to really take advantage of being able to save battery for that thing. I don't know why they're so afraid of that, but um, whatever. So the top option is... Smart invert, off. Smart invert, Double tap to toggle setting. off. I'm going to turn this on. On. So what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to invert your background and text color naturally, but it's supposed to leave the media, like any media that you're looking at, normal color, which is fantastic. You know, so if you're looking at pictures or, you know, video, you could have a little video uh, in the middle of the, the screen and that should look normal, And but the, you know, the interface around it would you know, would be actually inverted. And you do classic have invert. Off. a classic invert. Double tap to toggle setting. It did it in iOS uh, 10 and earlier. You still have that option. So let me go to my home screen. So look at my home screen. It's normal. Now here's the problem that I have with Smart Invert. It's a great idea. I love it. But they didn't go far enough. And here's where I'm a little bit confused. So... I'll show Navigation you folder. Where it does Home, work. Page two of four. App store. App store. App store. Kill another Double tap to open. Here. Uh, uh, you know, another thing here. Selected. App store updates. The Heading. App store has also seen a drastic redesign. But so check this out. So I'm on my update screen, and I have my tabs across today, the bottom. Tab, but one of five. Today, today Saturday, tab, September twenty third. Heading. The basics. What the heck is AR? And page two of thirty two. Look at that Mario Run thing right there. We still have the dark background, but the Mario run is perfect. He doesn't look all psychedelic and trippy. He's still got his red background, his red and uh, his blue, uh, you know, uh, overalls or whatever, and his red shirt and cap. It looks great. So it works in Page the app store. It works in photos and on the home screen. But... <sighs> That's really the only places that it seems to work right now. So if I go Apps. to, let's say I want to go to Doc, uh, Safari. Safari. Safari, done, button. Okay, oh, I was looking at a video. Done, button. Okay, let's go done. Yeah, I was, Address, so I was looking at a video. Let's go Secure to a, invalid tabs, button. Let's go to a different tabs. tab. Let's go to a... Itaku, the gamer's guide, but PC gamer, Let's go button. to PC gamer, because they have a way www .com. address, PC gamer com. Normally. Double tap to show controls. Okay. And I'm advertisement gonna... page one of eighteen slash visited link image let's go to our, slash visited let's just link reload image our main home page here, but you see look at the look at the inverted colors on the picture already, so you know it's not like Safari is a third party app why you know mail's the same thing it doesn't work in mail advertisement it doesn't work page in two of Safari. eighteen page three of eighteen <laughs> you know all the pictures are like are gonna look all screwy um. 
so I don't like that. You know, if I go to mail. Mail. Two unread emails. Uh, mail. See. Jesse Anderson. Preston. Jesse Anderson. VR presentation outline. Thursday. PDR IP 2016 edge. Unread. Uh, Dropbox. We notice a new sign into your Dropbox. Yeah, Free. Okay. Lowe's Fort. Chris Villesque. Update Audible. Uh, ends tonight. Something in your refreshing content. Well, I don't have a whole lot of mail. I mean, so, like, the message list looks great. And even looking at the messages with the invert, with the dark color, looks beautiful. But I wish, you know, they, they tease us with, like, the smart invert working in a couple of areas. But everywhere else, the, the pictures still look inverted and which look crazy. And I wish that was just a system. One thing I tried to ask during the beta and giving him feedback was that I said, hey, I love this feature. Keep it up. Um... But one question that I have is, is this just a something, just something that iOS manages overall in the background, or does each specific app have to implement custom code, even Apple's own apps? Do they have to implement custom code for invert the smart invert colors to actually work? Um, you know, because then you got like, let's say Facebook and Twitter. Twi yes, Twitter has a dark mode, uh, which I definitely use all the time. Um, but if I didn't, you know, but let's say I could just do it dark mode system wide. Um, you know, so if you go into Twitter or Facebook, social media, I go to my Amazon app, any of my banking apps, like all this stuff, all these apps use this white background. Um, so I'm just unclear, like, if I want to tell a developer that I would like the smart invert to be supported is there extra work that they have to do to make that work? Or is iOS 11 just supposed to take care of that in the background? You know, like, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. So let's go back into my task switcher. I'm going to disable app switcher. the smart Mail. invert active. right now. Safari, active, app store, active, settings, active. And we'll pop into settings. S settings, display accommodations, and back button, smart invert, on, Sorry, off. smart invert, I got to disable you right now. Um, but that's that's another feature that potentially for low vision users can be very accessibility. Nice. I Back just button. really really hope that they um, I hope that they roll it out you know easier for more apps to use because like I said especially I'd really be happy if Mail and Safari did it that would be really helpful especially since those are Apple apps oh it works in Photos too it does work in the Photos app so. You get the dark background, but you can look at all your photos. Like I guess I can quick demo that for you. Photography folder. Two apps. Show you a couple of my opening photos. Photos. Uh, concerts or something here. You know. Photos. Collections. Oh wait, back button. I turned smart invert off because I'm dumb. Hold on. App switcher. Settings. Active. Settings. settings. Active. Set. Invert colors. Off button. Selected. That one Display. More time. Smart invert. So off. I'll just show you that on. it does work in the colors app. Photos. So there collections. We go. We got back our dark. See, that's so much nicer. A dark background. But you got your pictures looking good. This is great. So this is actually a photo. Landscape. That I went September. To Live photo. Last moments. weekend. Back. Moments. Back. It was freaking cool, you guys. I actually thought about doing a video. F Whoa. What? Okay, I just looked at my screen. Uh. Home. Photos. Double tap to open. Actions available. Closing photography folder. Photography folder. Two apps. I just looked at the app screen switcher. and the photos pictures active. went totally nutso. Photos. Moments. Oh, you know button. what? Inverted. I wasn't paying attention to my video. Uh, I'll have to look, go back and look at the app store if that looked all screwy to you. Uh, Moments. Back button. <laughs> Moments. Collections. Back okay, button. Okay, so this works, but when I went into the full photo, it looked fine on my screen, but it looked all messed up and it went all landscape on the on the reflector app so i promise you that it does work in here i don't know why it just went screwy over mirroring but what i was saying really quickly is i went to this concert i really thought about doing a quick video on it but i'm just like ah, i don't know i just, so i'll just tweet about it instead but if you like metallica um if you like metallica and you want to see something different i went to this band that i heard about ages ago called apocalyptica which, believe it or not, they actually do, um, well, they do other stuff too, but they did their 20th anniversary of this uh, Apocalyptica Plays Metallica. And these guys, they do all this stuff with four cellos. Like, you're playing full Metallica songs, 
instrumental with four cellos and I was like this is just weird enough that I have to see this live because it was cheap concert too and I went in there and it was like it was just really really cool like I didn't know you could make a guitar or that you could make a cello shred like that so that you know like the first half they did just the cello part and then the second half they did this they added like the drum like they put this awesome drummer in there as well and it became just like a more like a metal show and it was just it was really freaking cool I had a blast. Um, so I just had to let you guys know about that, too, because that was just a sweet show. Um, but, yeah, you know, so I got a bunch of concerts. Live photo. You know, page concerts 12 of 13. Page here. 11 of 13. Uh, a little page 12 of 13. Page 13 of 13. Yeah, so page 13 13. Really nice with your inverted colors, you know. Apps. Settings. Active. So let's just say Settings. this again. Active. Smart invert. On. So a smart invert. Off. Turn that off. Accessibility. Um, Back button. Like I said, I'm not going to be able to cover General, every little feature um, in iOS 11 because we would be here all day. But the stuff that I App. typically use, um, just kind of wanted to run through or that I think that you guys might use or find uh, helpful, wanted to let you guys know that. So, um, I kind of talked a little bit about would I recommend people upgrade? And originally I said yes. Now I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, my phone has been behaving pretty well so far during this video. And when I first started iOS 11, <clears throat> it seemed to do okay. The more I used it though, I kind of had a little, I've been having some weird issues. And the main one that's really been frustrating me, it happened more on my iPad, but it has actually happened once or twice on my phone, is when I have voiceover running and I open Safari, could be an existing tab, could be just opening an, a new page from an email, whatever, I've had Safari and or voiceover just freeze solid, like literally can't do anything, no gestures work, sometimes even hitting the home screen takes forever uh, on my iPad once I actually had to do the um, do the crazy kind of uh, like soft reset where you hold the power button down and you see the shutdown thing and then you hold the home button to kind of snap it out of it and I've had Safari just like flat out not be respond like it shows up visually but it's just not interactable and eventually, if you do it enough times, like, you know, I did it three, four, five times, and then it would be fine. Um, but I don't know how they messed the head up so bad, because I didn't have that in the beta. I use Safari all the time to test, like, especially testing voiceover and things like that. Um, if you are an Outlook user, out, you know, if you have an Outlook uh, webmail account through Microsoft, there's also a kind of an Doc, annoying mail. bug. Uh in the uh, in the mail app, Apple's mail app, where you can read mail, but you can't reply to it that reply to it at the present time. Now you can go download Microsoft's own Outlook app, and then you're fine. But if you just you know like me, I just have okay, have everything go into one. I have three email accounts on my phone that I just you know have configured in my main uh, mail app. So I just okay, check them on one place. So if you want to reply, that's kind of a, like, I don't know how that got through. Uh, um, so there's little things like that. Um, there's also been some weird focus issues with voiceover. And by that, I mean, let's say I'm in the app switcher, you know? So if I bring up my app switcher with my, app switcher. Uh, you know, Settings. double Active. tap the home button. Swipe up with three fingers to close the app. Sometimes I'll flick Settings. to the left, Active. let's say. Photos. Active. Mail. Active. Safari. App Store. App, voice Dream. Watch. Active. So I have watch. A whole bunch active. Of stuff here. Oh yes. The Swipe watch up with three fingers to Voice Dream. Totally. Active. App Store. But active. Let's say that Safari. I close the app, app Store. store. Active. Closing App Store. Voice so Dream. Like I said, active. We're recording. Of course, it's going to be fine. Safari. Active. Safari. Swipe yeah, up with three fingers to Closing Safari. Mail. Active. But what I've found happen in the App Switcher and on the home screen, um, you know, I'll flick or something, and Voiceover will just go nuts, and it'll like pop completely over to like a totally different part of the screen or a totally different. Uh, application in the app switcher so like um, I mean to close uh, let's say the app store and then instead it shoots over six apps and it closes voice dream or something um, it's done that to me a few different times or I'll be on the I'll be on the home screen and I'll click one item 
and then it somehow opens up something else, which wasn't in focus. I, I don't know why. It doesn't do it every time, but there's a little bit of sketchiness with it. Um, another little voiceover thing is on the phone. It doesn't bother me any because I don't really notice or I really don't care. The volume, like when you hit the up and down volumes and it would go, you know, make that weird noise. It doesn't seem to do that right now. Um, so you just have to hit up and down and, you know, okay, hear if your app or voiceover gets louder or quieter. One other thing accessibility-wise that I would Double recommend tap to open. or that I want to show you is, remember in iOS 10 they introduced this, um, they introduced this new way to move apps around, which is actually really cool, where you would just touch an item. Podcast. Double tap to open. I Actions move, available. I would just flick up or down. Cap P. And I would Cap go P. to move. Audio desk pop-up. Headings. Containers. Speaking rate. Words. Characters. With my rotor. Audio destination. Headings. Oh. Containers. Okay, you're not even going to show. Usually there would be like a thing that just said activate. Podcast. Um, but let's, so, they, it's, you can still do it, but there's an extra step. And in order to do that, you double tap. And remember in the old way where you had to first double tap and hold to go into editing mode. And you have to do the same thing here. So let's go and move podcast. Double tap to open. I'll double tap and hold. You hear that bump, bump, bump. Started editing. Started editing. Now I have options. So podcast now if I use is my, editing. If I double tap to dock, phone is editing. Podcast is so editing. So that one it just switched Double on. tap to delete. Actions available. Dock, phone is editing. No, would you say? Double tap and podcast is editing. Audio destination, actions. Characters, actions. actions. Drag podcast. So drag podcast, that's basically move it. Activate, default. Or drag. Drag podcast. Activate. So default. we're just gonna get out of editing mode. There. Finished editing. But App what's store. cool, what I do like about it is they've added the ability to. Um, I could drag podcasts, and then let's say I could, I had another audio app. Maybe I had Vo uh, Voice Dream, or maybe I had Google Music or something. I could also uh, touch on those and then <clears throat> drag those as well. So then I could actually drag like three, four, or five apps at a time, dump them all into like an audio folder or something like that. So it does work similarly to iOS 10, but you do have to do that extra step. I don't, I mean, they could have done it without having to go into edit mode like they did in iOS 10. I don't know why they added back that extra weird ta double tap and hold step um, as a requirement, but I mean, it works. And now that I figured it out, it's fine. It's just, I don't know, they just added that. One thing I would add, the reason I wanted to show that to you, though, is I had a heck of a time getting that to work on my iPhone 7 Plus. And the reason for that is no matter, because, you know, you're on your phone and a lot of your, even some of your newer iPads, you have this force touch or whatever, you know, 3D touch, whatever they call it, where you press hard on the screen and you get these little pop-ups or whatever, little extra actions. I couldn't double tap and hold light enough. I mean, I did it seriously as light as I possibly could. And every time it would open the damn, uh, like force touch menu instead of going into edit mode. So what I ended up having to do doc settings is I go into double settings, settings, and, general oh back boy, button. Where was that at again? I was going to show you settings, what it was. Back button. iPhone storage uh, button, uh, accessibility, home button. Oh, let's button. see. It's not, I think it's back settings, the display, screen. general button. Do not disturb general display and bright wallpaper button. Display, man. Sounds and haptic. Serium search button. Touch ID and passcode button. Uh, Emergency SOS button. Battery button. Privacy button. Rose 16 to iTunes and wallet and accounts and pat mail. Contacts. Let calendar. Me just do a quick... Notes button. Reminders button. Phone button. Messages button. FaceTime button. Maps button. I guess I could have done a search too. Um, but there's a place. Rose 28 to compass button. Safari news button. music button. TV phone camera iBooks podcast game center button. Yeah, it might be under general. Rose six rose three rose one to eleven really of two hundred twenty eight general find it, button I'll just, general you know. button selected uh, setting airdrop button about soft air cam carplay button okay. home button button okay. accessibility iPhone storage background app refresh restrictions off button rose eight to see. nineteen of nineteen date and time keyboard lang dictionary but iTunes white VPN not regulatory reset shut down button now, keyboard um, rose one to ten of nineteen <laughs> I don't remember exactly where it is I just went stupid. But if you do go under settings, there is an area, um, and I might have just breezed past it in my hurry to kind of be efficient here. Um, but basically what I did is I increased the touch sensitivity for 3D touch. I didn't turn it off, but I switched it to firm instead of normal, which is what I had it originally set to. 
And that was really helpful because then you had to really kind of push harder on the screen for that to work. And now I can pretty much do the move, the edit gesture every time, it works every time. So if you do have that prob problem, you can either disable 3D Touch altogether if you don't you really use it, or you can do what I do and just, like I said, just switch the sensitivity to firm. Um, I forget exactly where it is in settings, but it's in there. And it's, it's pretty obvious once you see, you're like, oh, yeah, that's where it is. Um, so that's one thing I just wanted to bring up because some of that Doc. different, that gesture has, uh, has changed a little bit or the process has changed a little bit. Um, Braille support, I haven't really played with all that much. I just have been too busy at work. We have some Braille displays at work that I can play with, but I just, I've been so busy. I haven't really had a chance. One thing that I've heard positively is they fixed the long-standing bug where, remember, if you were typing in, let's say, grade two Braille, um, you typed and then you backspaced and then you typed in, you know, the replacement characters, but those replacement characters actually turned out to be contractions on their own. It would parse the word really screwy, and then it would add a contraction in the middle of a word, even though it, like, it doesn't honor, like, oh, there's a, there's a character here, not just another space. So now, when you do the Braille input, it's supposed to... Um, it'll parse the braille more correctly. That said, um, I've been hearing, again, go to the Apple Viz forums. There's a lot more discussion about particular iOS accessibility bugs. Um, so there are some braille issues. There's some, I, I've heard of a couple of things, a couple of devices kind of disconnecting after a little while for some reason. I've heard of, you know, I don't remember the specifics of braille bugs, but if you are a braille display user, they may have, you know, they fixed a couple bugs, but then they, you know, inadvertently introduced a few more. So I would say read the, there's a thread on iOS 11 bugs for voiceover users or something like that. Check that out if you are a Braille display user and, uh, you know, see if that's enough to maybe you know, enough to make you wait till another point release, iOS 11.1 or whatever. Podcast. Um, you know, on the iPad, there's been a bug where I use my... Doc, settings. Like if I Double open, tap to open. my app switcher. App switcher. Settings. I'm active. Going to settings. Set I'm settings. I'm glad they added the four-finger swipe gesture to switch between apps, kind of like your alt tabs. You don't have to go to app switcher. So on the phone, photos, collections, back button, mail, unread, drop. I can go like that. Photos, collections, back button, settings. I, so I can take four fingers and flick left or right, and I can just, boom, switch between apps. On the iPad, and this is a bug I reported in the beta too, and they just haven't fixed it. You can switch. I can flick. Basically, I can f uh, slide to the left with four fingers, but on the right, oh, if I go the other way, I just get the little warbling, you know, like if I go, oh, it actually has the home screen. Okay, well, but basically, um, it'll go one way, but not the other <laughs> on the iPad, and I hope they fix that, because that's especially where I'd love to use it more. I have also had voiceover... And I think it just happened now, which is what made me think of it. Um, Podcast. Okay. Double tap. I have had voiceover just kind of freeze a little bit or like I'll hear the... Apple support. Podcast. You know, the little clicking or the little audio sound effects, but no voice. I've had that happen maybe once or twice, not as much as other people maybe. So there are some bugs that I hope that get ironed out. I mean, overall, like I said, the, the Safari thing is the biggest issue for me because, like, when I go and I can't load a freaking web page, that gets really annoying. Sometimes it works beautifully, but I can't necessarily depend on that all the time. The other stuff, like, you know, the, the weird focus issues, like, they're minor, they're inconvenience, but the device is perfectly usable still. You know, nothing is really a showstopper. I mean, again, there's a lot of things that I really like in iOS 7. I like having the, the new control center. I like being able to have access to shortcuts. I love the screen recording feature. Um, there's, 
you know, some of the smart, the smart invert contrast, if they add it to more areas, I would love that. And there's just a, there's a lot of other little minor things App Store. You know, the new App Double. Store isn't Selected bad. apps today. Heading. Um, today, Saturday, September 20th. It's a little the weird basics. if you're what the heck is by touch. The basics. What the heck is it? Because sometimes some of the items, like if I go to games, like on the tab. bottom, Selected. they've switched between, they've switched what the tabs are. So on the bottom, you've got. Selected. Today. Tab. Today, games. Tab. Games, tool. Apps. Tab. Apps, updates. Tab. Four updates, five. Search. Tab. Search. Five. But if I go to, let's games, say, tab, games. Tool of five. Games. Heading. New game. The witness. Solve spellbinding puzzles. Button. Oh, yeah. I, am, I, I did a video for that for the PC version. The machines. Battle your friends. Good AR. Game, but button. really freaking hard. Page two of seven. Video. Page three of seven. So video. some of the bigger icons. Two. NBA. Like page four of seven. Like Puzzle. A, button. Page five of seven. Rig and Morty. Pocket Morty. Uh, uh, I see a little bit of an unlabeled uh, button or a screenshot here and there, but maybe they've kind of ironed that out even. But, you know, you have to just explore the, the store a little bit because the, Absolutely. you know, the tabs and some of the layout has changed. Um, so, but I mean, overall, I, like, I like iOS 11. One feature that I haven't talked about yet, um, but I want to mention is augmented reality. If you have a device that is at least, you know, within the last couple of years, I think you can do it from the six... I don't remember if it's the 6S or the 6, like, or the actual 6 series, like the 6 or the 6 Plus. I can't remember if it goes back that far. Um, but you can, iOS 11 supports augmented reality, meaning that, you know, virtual reality, you're in a headset and you're just looking at whatever's in the headset. Augmented reality, think about something like, you know, Pokemon Go, where you have, you know, if, if you don't turn that little camera feature off, you see your little Pokemon dudes um, in the real world. So yeah, they've introduced some games and actually some useful apps. Like yesterday, I played with this little virtual tape measure app. It's unfortunately a little bit hard for me to read the text. Uh, and I might actually contact the developer to say, hey, this would be a really cool low vision tool if you made a few tweaks to it. Um, but there's some really use like useful utility stuff. Like, you know, the IKEA has one already where you can you know, look at their catalog essentially and then go, oh, okay, this one, this shelf looks interesting or this chair looks interesting. And with augmented reality using your camera, you know, you, you point it at the corner of your room and the chair or the item will show up and you'll see, you'll get to see like, oh, does that look good there? Or would it fit there? Um, and it works kind of cool. The other night I was actually playing with a virtual a little pet dragon that I had that was walking around, literally kind of walking around and jumping around my apartment. He's like walking on my drum set and my, my couch. And it was just a really funny thing. I mean, it's, you know, kind of pointless. It's like a little virtual pet thing, but I'll, you know, I'll probably just try to do a video for that and kind of show you just cause it's, it, it's amusing, you know, it's kind of really cool. And right now these augmented reality apps, like I you know, thinking of like the dragon, there's a couple of dragon apps uh, already for whatever reason, they're both dragons. Um, but like I could see like virtual, you know, like a little virtual character or whatever that you can interact with right now, they're just using the cameras, but if you also enabled microphone support, it would just be cool. You know, you're looking at this thing in your real environment and then you could talk to it like, and you could give it commands like, Hey, go over there or, you know, like sit, you know, you could have a virtual pet, you know, like look at Nintendogs on the DS, you know, you could have like a little virtual pet or something, I don't know. But you could do some really neat stuff with it. So there's some game applications for it. There's some, you know, serious stuff for it. Not too many so far, but I'm sure that's going to come out, you know, and then when you, more will be released. You know, you get the iPhone 8 and then the upcoming iPhone 10 that are going to have even more, uh, you know, better camera and uh, actual chip support for doing augmented reality a little bit smoother. Because, like, I even when I was playing with it the other night, I noticed that, like, like the dragon, he would, it would look at a flat surface and instead of a wall, instead of being like a little side of a countertop, you know, like a little, uh, like a little wall, it kind of thought that as like a surface and he was kind of like walking along the wall, which was kind of a funny thing. But, you know, so, it, you know, it's not perfect, but I mean, it, it's a new thing and it's actually pretty cool. And the neat thing is you don't necessarily have to buy extra hardware to do it, like a VR headset. You know, if you have a fairly recent iPhone or iPad, because I did this on the iPad so that the buttons and stuff would be easier for me to see, 
it worked on my iPad Pro. So if you have that kind of a thing, you can already start tinkering with some of this stuff now. Um, so, you know, I know there's a lot of stuff that I didn't mention. Um, but those are just some things that I wanted to sh talk about it from my experiences so far as a low vision and a voiceover user. Some of the good, some of the bad. You know, I mean, if your primary speech, you could probably get by with updating. Screen For the most part, it's pretty good. TV. Um, the Safari thing is really obnoxious. I haven't, again, I've been so busy at work. I, I, I got an email, Apple or Apple Accessibility. I'm going to report the Safari thing because that has to be fixed. You know, but I, other people are reporting some of these other bugs, and I've been reporting them. So hopefully with a point release, uh, we'll get some updates for some of these little quirks. Um, uh, you know, I guess check out the AppleViz forum. You know, listen to some of the things that I was talking about in this video. And just kind of, you know, I, I would say there's nothing really show-stopping. You, you could do it, but if there's something that's, that you really rely on, especially like Braille display or something, maybe you want to hold off a little while longer. Um, cause there's a little bit of jank, I'm not going to lie, but you know, just kind of use your discretion, you know, have a backup in case you want to revert. Um, you want to revert back while you can, but that's kind of a quick look at iOS 11. I'm going to give or at least my thoughts on iOS 11. I know when I stop the video, there'll be things like, Oh, I should have covered that. I've totally forgot. Um, you know, I didn't cover the iPad as much. As a, because uh, the iPad, they've done a lot with the iPad as far as like, um, you know, visual stuff. Like you can drag, there's a lot of drag and drop. There's not as much support of that on the phone right now. So like, but on the, on the iPad, you can drag things, you know, again, this is going to be a lot of visual stuff, which is why I'm not really going to concentrate on it here. And partly because I haven't really played with all of it myself, but you can like drag you know, take your fingers and drag content from one app to another, or it's got like a like a app switching thing where like, oh, okay, I'm gonna drag something, open up the app switcher, jump something into here, and then, you know, be able to pull multiple things from multiple apps and dump them into places. And I think largely you kind of have to be able to see really well to do that effectively. There are voiceover ways to do it. But I haven't really figured all that out as far as the iPad gestures. So if I do, and if I do, Screen if I find it really useful or something, music, maybe I'll do a quick uh, revisit on that part of it. But yeah, there are uh, there are some iOS multitasking and uh, type stuff available, you know, for iPad users that aren't really as prevalent prevalent on the phone. Um, one other thing I didn't mention yet is the Files app. It kind of takes the place of like your iCloud Drive or whatever they used to call it. Or, TV, uh, page three or four, thing. Linus folder, phone, on page phone two. Right now. But basically, well, let's do a search for it here. Um, let's go find App Store. Spotlight, G, F, F, A, I, F, L, F, 25, R, R, 24, R. delete, 25, E, E, 28 items found, S, F, 21 items found, files, button. So if I go in here. Files, recents, heading. I haven't even opened it yet. See recently opened documents here, or use the browse tab to see all documents and folders. Selected. Rec so, what I was really hoping this would be. Selected. Recents. Ta browse. Tab. 202. Selected. Browse. So we got tab, a whole bunch of folders here. What I was hoping this would be is I was hoping that they would have a compartment of your device available when I hooked it up to my PC, my Windows PC. And it would just show up like files does, you know, like the like when I, on previous versions of iOS, the photos app or the photos area is visible, and you could copy stuff from the phone or tablet to your computer, but you couldn't copy from your computer to the photos folder. But what I was hoping is that you could do that uh, within the files app, you know, not not access all your system files, sure, but be able to copy back and forth. Unfortunately, they haven't gone that far yet, but they're taking baby steps. So you can use iCloud Drive. You can use, you can set up your Dropbox, your Google Drive, your OneDrive. I haven't played with it a whole lot, but basically the cool thing is, is that you can kind of consolidate all this cloud storage Apps. and you can at least be able to manipulate your files and folders. You can kind of make your own folder structures 
that apps can access system wide and which is like I said it's a good step you know it's not quite where I want it to be but you know Apple for a lot of this uh, techie stuff you know this is kind of more of like an advanced feature I'd probably say um, they're, 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 I mean, like I said, between that and the screen recording, those are things that I didn't even expect Apple to even attempt to do. So the fact that they actually did pretty well with the video stuff, the video recording, and at least they're looking at the files thing, so there is hope. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on iOS 11 so far. Overall, not bad. There's some definitely, definitely some uh, very useful tools and uh, reorganizations of things. I love the new control center. Um, the video recording is going to come super in handy. I'm glad that it seems like I have voiceover back over AirPlay. Huzzah! Awesome. And you know, all just tons of new stuff. There are some bugs. The Safari thing for me is the one that's driving me the most nuts, but there's some focus issues with voiceover. Uh, again, if you're doing Braille display stuff, you may want to check around on Apple this just to make sure before you upgrade. And I, yeah, um, that's iOS 11. So to wrap up here, I'm going to actually be covering, um, you saw in my app switcher earlier, Yes, I did end up getting an Apple Watch. I finally dove in. I finally Podcast. said, you know what? Uh, the tech seems to be far enough along. I'm curious enough about it. Oh, what the heck? Let's get an Apple Watch. So I did end up getting the aluminum space gray 42 millimeter uh, the Apple Watch third generation with cellular cellular yes i did get the crazy one i got the cellular one and i got it all set up i'm wearing it on my wrist right now i can touch it boom i got my watch so I, i'm gonna play with this for at least another week or so because i I've, again it's saturday i just got it yesterday afternoon when i got home from work and i've been playing with it off and on um a fair amount the last day or so and I gotta say I'm kind of liking it so far there are some things that I really wish it could do that I I hope come to it eventually there are a few quirks that I'm trying to figure out still um, but overall it was actually really pretty easy it was well actually it was very easy to set up uh, and even get the cellular working I had zero trouble I think I got the thing pretty much through the initial setup process in, in about 10 minutes <clears throat> and the only reason it took me that long is because it had to sync like my contacts and some stuff from my phone over to my watch but even yeah I mean even including activating it on Verizon uh, pff, seamless not hard at all uh, you know you just triple click the crown to turn voiceover on and off and boom you're there so yeah, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it through its paces, especially when I go to work again next week and I'm out and about more, moving around more, doing stuff. And we'll see how the battery life goes. We'll see the, what I use it for, the functionality. I'm going to talk to another coworker who has had the previous Gen Apple Watch so he can maybe clue me into a couple of more tips that I might not know about. Uh, yeah, but we're going to you know, compare war stories here in the next uh, couple days at work. And hopefully within the next uh, couple of weeks, maybe I will get to... Uh, Screen dimmed. Uh, I'll do an Apple Podcast. Watch review, hardware review for you guys. Talk about that. So, yeah, um, we'll be taking a look at that. And I might actually do it in two parts um, because there's a lot you can do with the watch alone. But there is still there are still some things that you really still have to manage from the phone as far as setup and configuration. Like, just for instance, the one thing that I found was really strange. Double tap to open. You can enable voiceover and disable voiceover on the watch. <laughs> but that on your watch, that's the only config you get. Um, so, like, you can't... I was like, okay, how do I speed up or slow down the speech? And it turns out you actually have to do that from the watch app on your phone, which kind of seems dumb. Like there could be a little like when I did a call yesterday and there was a slider for volume there. So you couldn't you know, you could have a slider for a, a volume and a rate under the voiceover thing or settings. I don't know. 
But I'll talk about that more in a future video. This is really about iOS 11. Um, but yeah, just know that I will be covering the Apple Watch in the future. And as far as iPhone 10, I really don't think I'm going to get it. If you want me to cover the iOS 10, donations are welcome. But otherwise, <laughs> I think I'm going to hold off because there's just enough... There's just enough sacrifices and just enough jank, it seems, that I don't think I'm going to bite. I think I'm going to wait till next year when they figured out the screen resolutions and their weird little ears at the top. And maybe they'll add us, uh, you know, a, a full screen or somewhere, touch ID back in somewhere. Uh, there's just some stuff. Um, I, I'm my The main thing I wanted to see is if I could run augmented reality with my iPad or my iPhone 7 Plus. And it seems that for the most part I can. So you know what? I'm as much as I want OLED. Um, I talked about it in the other Apple uh, event video. You know, with the screen size being a little weird and everything. Despite wanting OLED, I think I might just wait for 2018. So more than likely no iPhone 10 review for you guys, but nevertheless, you get to check out the Apple Watch here pretty soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, and until next time, I will talk with you guys again later.